Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, welcome to the, uh, uh, the safety committee of the MTA, uh, the February meeting of the board. Thank you for being here. Um, first, can we hear the safety briefing, as always? Your safety is of the foremost importance to the MTA. Therefore, we ask that you listen and adhere to the following instructions. If you witness an emergency, notify emergency personnel in the room and call 911 immediately. Please follow any audible instructions provided through the public address system or visually on screens in the event of an emergency. If an alarm sounds, wait for a public address announcement and follow instructions. If told to go to another floor or to evacuate the building, leave all unessential items behind and use stairwell A just across the main hallway or stairwell B down the hallway past the elevators. If you have a mobility disability or cannot self-evacuate, please proceed to stairwell D or E for assistance by MTA staff or emergency personnel. An automated external defibrillator, AED, for use by trained personnel is in the main hallway just past the elevators. If you need assistance during an evacuation, please tell an MTA staff member or emergency personnel. Thank you and have a safe day. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Diodato, do we have any public speakers? We do. We have uh, five public speakers today. Uh, as a reminder, we ask that all public speakers adhere to the MTA's rules of conduct and decorum. I would also like to remind our public speakers that in the interest of time and fairness to all speakers, we limit everyone to two minutes. Please be aware that there will be a warning beep to remind you that you have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. The first speaker will be Mary Bowden, followed by Joseph Morales. So I, so I can see you. Anybody know what this is? To do not resuscitate. I've ordered four of them, one for each car, one for the house, and one to carry with me. In June, I'm going to be 90. I'm not going to be here much longer. So it's your job to leave a world that my grandchildren can enjoy. And this being the safety comp meeting, I want to point out a few things. I've been suggesting various things on road lines and signs to make the roads safer. Buses go faster. Haven't been changed. So if the people who've been there for five years and you've read my emails and I've documented it, it can only mean one thing. The leadership has to be changed, which means you need a new president of Metro North, a new president of Long Island Railroad, a new president of Bridges and Tunnels, a new commissioner of transportation for the state of New York, a new commissioner of transportation for the state of New Jersey. Because until you actually use the rules that have been in effect for the last 50 years, they get ignored. You got distracted drivers. You got people when the light turns green, nobody moves because they're texting. That's reality. And you're going to deal with reality if this is a safety issue because I can't do it. So you fire the president of Metro North and you fire the president of Bridges and Tunnels because they didn't fix what they should have fixed. This goes right up to national. You, this is by accident. I didn't know it was going to be safety this morning. I also didn't know that I was going to have to carry this around either. So when you ask me how I am, it really hurts because I'm not good. Thank you. Our next speaker is Joseph Morales, followed by Andy, Andy Keto. All right. Oh, sorry. Now do we fit the timer or do we just 
Do I have to wait for the timer or can I start? Okay. Um good morning everyone. Um what's it called? Um I this is the safety committee meeting. Um I mentioned this at the last board meeting. Um you know, the cops camera care initiative has worked really well. The one way I think it could be improved, because like I said last time, every station is unique. The group station managers that are already responsible for touring stations to um, investigate conditions, they should also be empowered to contact their, their local police precincts, MTA police, and community boards to ensure that police that are sent to these stations can handle specific issues. There are some stations like 191st Street on the one train. Um, part of it's not MTA operated, but this is a good example that have higher rates of drug use. I go in and I see syringes on the ground. Other stations like 182nd, 183rd Street, B and D, and a lot of IND stations are like this, have a massive mezzanine. That poses a higher risk for robberies and other violent crimes, especially later at night. I also would like, um, despite cop camera, cops cameras care, I saw the board book for today's meeting, and it seems like the number of home, the rate of homeless and the line stations is increasing a little bit. I'm not sure exactly why that's occurring, but we might need to increase the amount of resources we place throughout the subway system. Um, you know, our lines are long. And if we wait, and when you're homeless and you're really vulnerable underground, a lot of things can happen to you between make a and in 207th Street and Far Rockaway Mott Avenue. And like I said, different stations may be unique, some neighborhoods may have higher rates of homeless individuals than others. Some neighborhoods may have higher rates of crime that could lead to less safety for homeless individuals. So we need to make sure we keep all things in mind to continue sustaining and building on the progress we have already made. Thank you for your time and good work this month. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jason Anthony. I'm sorry, Andy Keto, followed by Jason Anthony. Hey, good, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, you guys should fix your audio a little bit, but you know, let's get on. My name is Andy Keto, and I'm here to talk about um, subway surfing. Yet again, another uh, kid has died trying to do uh, uh, idiot stuff and not causing his life. And this is going on everywhere in the system, especially on the elevator lines, especially on the J and on the 7 train. I've seen a lot of kids surfing on, on, on top of the train. That's, that's very unacceptable. How many more have to, have to, have to be tragically killed until something is done? My solution is my suggestion to you guys is, is to add police on, trying to add police as much platform as possible on both the J and the 7. Those are like the hotspot lines for subway surfing right on top of the train because and just get them, once they get caught, you put, get them down, either arrest them or get them a fine and send and, and report them to your parents. And they also need to be uh, some kind of uh, school um, uh, or community reach program. So MTA staff can go to the schools and, and tell about the dangers of subway surfing. This is getting out of control. Okay, let's get, let's get into the situation with Michael Ortiz. So again, uh, I, there's been a report of him uh, trying to uh, enter um, track one and two, um, uh, track 11 and 12 on Jamaica LA Divorce. So I hope you can investigate that. You know, he's already been accused of copying me on, on, on the community post on YouTube. So yeah, try to look into that. All I say, thank you all for watching. And I hope, I may not make it to the railroad, but I'll probably speak on transit. So have a good day. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jason Anthony, followed by Charleston D'Souza. Good morning, Safety Committee. Jason Anthony here. Uh, unfortunately, this month uh, on my home, uh, this month I'll be at headquarters uh, later today. Yet again, another teenager, um, fortunately, did the wrong thing. Uh, this is a trend seen on TikTok and um, see, I have seen this on my TikTok feed on 
a daily basis. And also, as a positive news, I've been seeing more accessibility signs on more subway stations. Uh, yesterday, I was at uh, 14th Street on the 8th Avenue line. I saw one of these signs. It's a positive sign, but regarding subway surfing, you guys need to do more. And the NYPD commissioner needs to get involved. I have not seen her say anything regarding this. She needs to say something publicly regarding this. And anybody who is not an MT employee needs to be prosecuted in a federal level because I have seen this in social media. So that's all I would say this month. I'll see you guys later on at Two Broadway. Thank you. Our last speaker will be Charleston D'Souza. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Charlton D'Souza, president of uh, Passengers United. Unfortunately, um, another individual has died uh, from subway surfing. We need to get this under control in our subway system, and we need police and the high schools and the junior high schools to work in coordination with the MTA. There needs to be safety videos. But what I also want to talk about is where are these SOS outreach teams? I don't see them in the subway. This weekend, the last weekend, and it was just out of control. I saw a guy on the Q train. He was harassing people. There was another incident where a guy took out a knife and was menacing people. The subways are just a mess. And we're all being lied to by the elected officials, by the mayor, the governor, and even the MT chairman and the board members. I'm sorry, but no, crime has not improved. One person's already been murdered this year. 11 people were murdered last year. How many more people are going to die in the subway? And if kids are jumping on top of trains, that tells you everything you need to know. Subway system is in a state of crisis. I've been saying it. What I need the MT chairman and this board to do is demand accountability. These nonprofits are getting millions and millions of dollars to remove the homeless. Where are they? What is happening? We need a station by station, line by line breakdown of how many homeless are being served, what's happening to them, because it's not right to the passengers. You know, you guys want to increase the fare now, and this is what we have to deal with. People cannot get to work because you have five people sleeping in a subway car. That's not right. If we're paying a 275 fare, we deserve a place to sit down, and we should not be disturbed or harassed or have to deal with feces or urine on the trains. That's disgusting. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our speakers today. Okay. Um, thank you to the public speakers. Uh, can we have uh, uh, approval of the minutes uh, from the November 29th meeting? Any comments or corrections? I'm not going to go over them now, but there's several um, grammatical errors and missing words. I'll just go over that with someone afterwards. Okay. Um, subject to Mr. Albert's grammatical and vocabulary corrections, can I have an approval of the minutes? Uh, motion? Second. Second. All, approve, all in favor, and the, motion, the minutes are approved. Um, can you present the work plan, Pat Warren, for approval? Thank you, Chair. Board members, on page six of the committee book is the annual work plan, and it is also displayed on the slide. The plan includes recurring topics um, where we give you a deeper dive into some of the programs that we work on each year. As the year progresses, other topics may become significant, and we will include them in this meeting's discussions. This year, we included security as well as safety topics. Unless you have questions, I will ask that you approve this year's plan. Chair. Uh, Mr. Albert. Pat, have you or 
Jano, you contemplated having safety committee more frequently than it is now. It's such an important topic, and there's developments all the time. I'm just wondering if that's been thought about. Um, we have a couple of different committee meetings that are we've had similar discussions about. Why don't we take it offline and see sure. how we, we want to prioritize it? Uh, um, but I'm open to the discussion. Uh, other comments or questions? Mr. Brigham. Uh Yes, just to make it official, I know we've had a conversation, Pat, on this, but as part of that work plan, uh, developing that policy on motorized vehicles on our, our transit system. Yeah, um, we, uh, we will we will definitely discuss it. I just don't know which month it will be in now, so we'll, we'll, we will definitely discuss it. Yeah, I just want to reassure you that that process has been the subject of intensive work for some time now, so um, it, it is not, uh, not being pushed off. Okay, with those two comments, uh, any uh, further comments on the work plan? Motion to approve the work plan. Motion, second. All in favor, mo the work plan is approved. Um, uh, Pat, would you uh, present yep. the safety and security brief? Sure. Thank you. Um, the MTA continues to be among the best in the passenger transportation industry regarding major accidents and incidents, which highlights the, the safety efforts that each of the agencies put towards maintaining and training. While the rate of employee accidents remains low across all agencies, the greatest cause of employee injuries are slips trips and falls, which predominantly result in soft tissue injuries. Each agency has programs to examine incidents and implement technical, which is like infrastructure, like handrails and stuff, or training awareness uh, mitigations to reduce uh, the risk of these kinds of accidents. Similarly, the rates of uh, customer accidents remain low, with the predominant injuries also being caused by slips, trips, and falls. As you ride the MTA system, you will see uh, renewed messaging reminding customers to use handrails and grab bars, as well as being mindful when transitioning between tra platforms, trains, and buses. Agency safety statistics can be found on pages 9 through 21 of the committee book, which, as you, uh, which has a new look. Uh, the new format attempts to display statistics in a more rapidly understandable format with descriptions of safety mitigation prevention activities. Your feedback on this new format is welcome. For the uh, edification of uh, newer committee members, in 2019, the Federal Transit Administration regulated the transit agencies that regulated that transit agencies submit an agency safety plan annually. The FTA further requires that agency's board, that the agency's board approve the plan before submission. As buses and subway operations are significantly different, New York City Transit submits a plan for each organization. In previous years, these plans have been re, uh, reviewed and submitted to the board for approval. Different for this year's submission is that the bipartisan infrastructure law required each transit agency to establish a safety committee made up of equal members from labor and management. The, the, this committee is required to agree on the substance of the um, agency safety plan uh, prior to submitting it to the MTA board for approval. Last July, this committee was formed and met with members from the um, TWU and New York City um, Transit leadership. Subsequently, this, labor, uh, this joint labor management safety committee signed off on the plans which were submitted to you last week for review. Changes in this year's versions were minor and reflect updates on staff positions and new requirements dictated from federal agencies. A summary of the changes was provided to you last week also. Unless there are questions or objections, Chair, I would ask that the Safety and Security Committee to endorse and recommend these plans to the full board for approval at Thursday's board meeting. Okay, I just want to acknowledge the, the, man, the folks who contributed to this, I think, a model management labor uh, discussion and process. Um, it was required by the federal IIJA law, um, but our team uh, on both, so both at the MTA and also the TWU moved quickly to implement it effectively, and I, I, I recommend it to the board for approval on, uh, at the meeting on Thursday. Okay. Let me switch to security topics. Over the last three months, uh, since the governors and the mayors announced, uh, announced step up of support for uh, police and outreach services, the MTA has, been con uh, has seen continued progress in reducing crime in the subways. Major felony crimes are down 12 percent 
versus the same period last year. And while we do not have all the data for February, the reduction in crime continues at about the same rate thus far. Further, the rate of felony crimes per 1 million riders is also down by 29 percent versus the same time last year. January, uh, 23 crimes per 1 million rider were uh, 1.6 uh, per million riders, which is down significantly since 2022, which was 3.1, and 2021, which was 2.8. Employee assaults and harassments are of particular concern to all of the MTA. What you see on this page is the reported workplace violence on the left graph um, for the previous 12 months and a comparison of the of cases for January um, of 2022 and 2023 on the right graph. While, um, while there was an increase in incidents in January, the trend for the year is down. We have, seen, uh, we have been busy with train patrols, bus patrols, station patrols, the introduction of gate guards and increased police presence to curb this disruptive and sometimes tragic behavior. As you are aware, MTA is putting significant resources towards reducing track um, trespass and intrusion. These mitigation efforts include technical solutions such as um, the introduction of laser intru um, intrusion detection devices, LIDs, more police and staff presence on platforms, and public messaging. Track intrusion incidents over the last 12 months are trending down. January saw a decrease in incidents versus December of 22 by uh, less than, more than 7 percent and 33% and, uh, from 2022, so that's a, a good trend. Let me, um, now, uh, in the last few minutes of, this, of the meeting, let me introduce um, MTA PD's Chief of Operations Management, Tom Taffy. A lot has been going on to improve MTA PD's operations and consequently reduce crime and improve the quality of com uh, commuting experience for customers in the railroads and in support of transit operations. Chief Tappy will describe a bit of uh, what is at play, Chief. Good morning. Uh, yes, the MTA Police Department has uh, started or continued many major initiatives in 2023, um, the first one being uh, train patrol, which has been announced several times over, uh, dedicated police officers riding the Long Island Railroad and the Metro North trains. Um, it's resulted in um, better confidence in, in the the ridership and the, uh, the police department. And for January, we just got the numbers in that it, we have doubled the previous year of train patrols, and we had 4,000 for, uh, for the month of January 2023. Along with uh, train patrols is the outreach to um, different stakeholders, internal stakeholders, uh, unions, our own internal unions uh, who had backed the, the uh, creation of the train patrols, and then the P precinct commanders who um, who go out and talk to the local mayors and district attorneys and um, other enforcement agencies to help us when we do have incidents on the train that we have to do, we have to uh, enforce operations there. Also, starting uh, last October and continuing into 2023 is the subway operations that we've gone. Uh, one is the hub operations. We've taken control uh, of the four hub uh, subways in, in, in and around the commuter rails, which is Grand Central, Penn Station, Atlantic Terminal, and Jamaica. We've had great success there. Uh, we've had a lot of fair, a fair evasion enforcement approaching almost 2,000 um, fair evasion summonses. And it's resulted in uh, reduction in quality of life reports uh, up to 45% in those stations and weekly ridership, uh, which has increased 10% above the baseline in those four stations alone. The second half of the subway operations, the nighttime usually, is the end of line operations. We have dedicated police officers to this now, no longer on overtime. This is a, a specific group of officers who are specifically trained and will receive more training uh, in the coming months when it comes to uh, crisis intervention and homeless outreach. Uh, also has been a successful mission. Uh, me and myself and the chief uh, regularly go out on these patrols ourselves to observe and report. Uh, the last piece is the training, which is a big focus for this, for this 2023 year and the new administration. We've started this year with our own training and leadership for executives uh, through the FBI uh, leader training, uh, which just completed. There's a, it's a three-week course. We completed the first week, uh, and over the rest of the year, we'll complete two more weeks, which is called the Trilogy. Uh, we also have new leadership training for our first-line supervisors, the sergeants. Uh, new one is actually starting tomorrow. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the ICAT training, which is crisis intervention training, which is conducted by the Police Executive Research Forum, which is a uh, national uh, police agency, police academic agency that uh, helps us with training. 
all that said, uh, training is the biggest focus uh, for, for all of these uh, initiatives that we have. Uh, we are looking to um, also start our own uh, police academy, a new brand. A, uh, we had a first step this month with, uh, we, we actually have our police uh, instructors working inside the NYPD Police Academy, training our instructors on police science. Uh, and that's, what I, that's all I have. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. I'm Mr. Mack, I wants to be recognized. Mr. <clears throat> All these initiatives seem great. Uh, <clears throat> what have you done uh, to increase your, your men and women staffing patrol? We've recently, actually, tomorrow we'll be hiring, uh, swearing in 29 police officers. There's eight that are in the academy now, and we're looking to uh, hire another 20 or 25 next month, and they will all be going to the... Uh, the districts and the subways. Uh, I'm sure you're watching the retirements as well. Yes, we've done a, a, a complete staffing analysis. We uh, we should be done with a full staffing analysis and um, and report back within the next few months. We look at about the attrition of 60 police officers a year, um, and then we are doing a hiring plan for the next two to three years to ensure that we um, maintain our numbers that we have. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I just want to acknowledge that you know, we, we had um, many of the activities you described have been ones that were ongoing in different ways, but since you, Chief Muller and you joined the force, the, 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 uh, the visibility and effectiveness, especially in the train patrol area, has dramatically improved. And I just want to shout out to the folks who are working in those four terminals in the subway environment. They are very visible, very present, and I think when you go through Grand Central, Atlantic, Jamaica, or Penn, um, the subways as well as the commuter rail facilities, you feel like it is really well policed, and I, I want to acknowledge that. Thank um, you. The chief calls at the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, response. Yeah. So we yeah. have people on the, as soon as you get on the commuter rails, they're on the stations, they're on your trains, now they're in your subway hubs, hopefully all the way to your, to yeah. your uh, destination and on the way back. Yeah. Okay. Um, onward. Uh, thank you so much. Are there any other comments or questions on the on um, Mr. Uh, Warren's report, Mr. Taffy's supplement. Okay, onward. Um, let's hear. Oh, we, you, there, are there any additional statistics that you need to talk about? There, there, it's, I, I spoke to statistics earlier. They're in the book too. And, and so, if there's any questions, yeah. I certainly can ask. Them. I mean, listen, we, we, there's a lot of ground covered very quickly in this meeting. I, I just want to make make sure everybody feels, members of the committee who show up feel. You know, we can talk about any of these issues. There, there is progress on the safety and security and the perception of safety and security in the subway system, which is Im super important and has been recognized, um, widely recognized. There's, there are, uh, you know, there's the improvements to our policing um, that we've heard about. There, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of information in the book about employee safety, employee accidents, and the customer accidents, and so on. All these topics are fair game for discussion. I just want to make sure everybody feels it, because whether we have this meeting more frequently or not, this is the forum for, for talking about some of that stuff. So, uh, Blanca Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know that some of the um, public comments um, discuss subway surfing. Where would that be captured in terms of stats, and if you could talk a little bit more about that? I don't have them in front of me right now, but we do um, keep track of all of the instances of subway survey. We've got uh, Bobby, Mr. Bobby Deal here who's, who uh, keeps track of that information. Um, and um, the MT NYPD has been very focused, particularly certain areas that, the, that they tend to uh, go to, to to surf, and they're very focused in those areas, and they've picked up, I cannot tell you how many kids, young people, over the last months um, there, and just every once in a while, one, one has gotten through, but, and we need to continue to try to focus in that area. Yeah, I was just going to echo what you're saying, Pat. The NYPD has actually put a, a bigger effort into the line, such as the 7 and the J, where they're seeing subway surfing from these, you know, from these youths that are watching it on TikTok or social media and just making, you know, bad decisions, to be quite frank. Yeah, but we've made, we, we've made, uh, approaches to some of the social media companies that we're going to renew it again. This is, this is something nobody wants to see. A 15-year-old kid just breaks your heart. 
Um, so uh, we got to keep pushing. Social media companies, it's not news to anybody, are not always uh, focused on, on discouraging reckless behavior. Uh, Mr. Albert. Okay. Uh, in the case of subway surfing, it seems like more incidents have taken place along the J line in the vicinity of the Williamsburg Bridge. So I'm wondering if at Delancey Essex or Marcy Avenue, we could have people watching for, for this kind of activity? I think that's what you're hearing from our law enforcement team, Mr. Deal, and otherwise is that the, yeah, the NYPD is well aware of it and they're yeah. doing that. Go ahead. Right, exactly. You know, unfortunately, you know, these, these youths are getting on a train, they going across the bridge. It's great to have uh, one of these, uh, you know, type cameras that, that you can actually see, and that's what they're looking for. So, but NYPD is, is very much aware of it. All right, with that unhappy topic, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. And, um, we're adjourned. Thank you.